Today I have with me a woman with a vocal range spanning women, creatures, and little boys. She's, <laughs> okay. She's worked on shows like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Generator X, Miss Tara Sands. Hello, hello. And how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. I, that was a, quite an introduction, thanks. Oh. Spanning, what did you say? Creatures, women, and little boys? Yes. <laughs> that should be the name of my one-man show. <laughs> women, creatures, and little boys. <laughs> I don't know. That's right. weird. So... <laughs> First off, well, what is it that got you interested in acting? Oh, boy. Uh, well, I was, uh, from a very young age, I was doing a lot of theater, you know, in my school and things like that. And then in high school, I started working in New York. And one of my, I was a singer for a long time. And uh, I met with an agent and they said, do you want to do voiceovers? And I said, what's that? And um, and they sent me on this thing. And I thought, oh, my gosh, voiceovers are fun. Uh, and I got the job and I had to say, ooh, gross, a wart or something to that effect. <laughs> it was for Compound W. And uh, and that's when I realized there's this whole other side of, of acting that I didn't even know existed. But I was, you know, 16 years old, so how could I really? Hmm. But uh, yeah, so that's how I, I was always acting, but that's how I fell into the voiceover side of it. And what was it like when you did your first uh, recording session? When I said, ew, gross, a wart. Yeah, uh, like, what, like, did you just come in and was like, I, hey, what do I do? I could not <laughs> believe I got paid to do that. Um, and, you know, obviously that was one of the easier jobs. But, you know, as I started learning, like, I, one of my early jobs was an audio book. And I thought, wow, this is a lot of work. Um, but I felt like having training and then, you know, I went to college for acting and all that. I thought, oh, this this could prepare me to do all these things. And the, and working in a studio is so much fun. You know, there's I'm a gadget person. So when I was young and looking at all the the gear, I was really impressed. And I thought, I want to spend more time here. So I guess that does that answer it? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm used to being the one asking questions. So this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just versa. interview you? Is that weird? Has anyone ever just taken over and asked you questions? No, but that'd be interesting. Cause... OK, well, I might just it might just happen. It's like I'm gonna be now. I'm gonna be the one put on the spot. Well, because I know that you do impressions. I see that here. So I, oh. uh, so you know, you might have to slip into some weird personas during the interview. <laughs> oh. Well, you're on Pokemon, so maybe I could talk to you like Meowth the whole time. Fantastic. <laughs> I could talk to you. All right. Uh, what do you What do you do next time? <laughs> That's very good. No, oh, thank you. I'm impressed. Well, being a fan of Pokemon at a young age, it, it's. It, it it grows on you, and you can do impressions a lot better. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, cool. And uh, what are your, some of your favorite roles that you can remember? Oh, uh, well, I love doing Generator X. That was super fun because um, she was kind of a, a tomboy, but she was cool, but she was still a little girly. She sort of she just she was a cool character to play, and I like doing new animation like that. Um what else did I really love? Uh, fighting foodons back in the day was always really fun to do because we got to do a bunch of music too, which was cool. Um, and then I, you know, a lot of times the really fun ones are the like the weird incidental characters. Like I was doing something recently and the director said, oh, could you be this crazy old lady with 20 cats? And I said, oh, yeah, <laughs> I got to do some crazy weird voice that, you know, no one necessarily would have thought of me for if it had been the lead in a series. <laughs> but when she has two lines, I get to do really cool stuff like that. So, yeah. So my favorite role is the crazy old lady in an episode of something I can't remember. That's <laughs> that'll go down in history. <laughs> Well, I don't remember anything. I just remember there was an old cat lady. <laughs> There's an old cat lady. But she was she screamed. She was insane. Yeah. So stuff like that always is, is a surprising fun day in the studio. Hey, and um, I've noticed because you were a massive amount of characters on Pokemon. Like, <laughs> we yeah, all massive were. We all were. And I don't even know if they're all correct, to be completely honest. Sometimes I look and I think, I don't know where they got this information. But some of them are correct, I'm sure. What I'm curious about, uh -oh. were you Bulbasaur? Yes. You were Bulbasaur. Oh, my gosh, yes. That was the first day I went into – I don't to this day know how I got that job. I went into the studio, and and I was doing – I forgot what voices I did in the first episode, and they showed me this little creature. I'd never done anime. I'd never done really any animation. Uh, and they showed me this little blue guy. 
And uh, they said, make him sound kind of like this. Like, and I had no idea if they were going to keep it. And then it was Bulbasaur. And I was like, wait, that you're using that? Are you sure? <laughs> and uh, it stuck. And that's probably like one of the most well-known Pokemons. So I got lucky. No, it's one of my <laughs> favorite Pokemon. So. <laughs> Yeah, that I mean, it was super fun to do. He and Bulbasaur, I don't know. I mean, I call him a he, but I guess we don't really know. I always thought of it as a he. <laughs> I did, too. I did, too. I don't know why, though, but I guess it, it is. But Bulbasaur even sang in one episode, which is so weird. Like, we got to do so much fun stuff. But, so, yes, it, that is me. That's I remember the the, there was one episode where it was a large group of Bulbasaurs. Uh-huh. Were oh, you yeah. every Bulbasaur in that scene? Yeah. You were every Bulbasaur <laughs> in that scene. We had to. I mean, sometimes I was Bulbasaur without even going to the studio because all he said was Bulbasaur. <sighs> so, you know, he'd be in episodes where I don't, I didn't even go, <laughs> which is so weird. I was in London once and I picked up a Bulbasaur toy and my voice was in it. And I thought, I never recorded that, but I guess I didn't have to because he only says it's Bulbasaur. Like, who are you? <laughs> it was so freaky, but it was me. You know, I thought, okay. Because I always thought that Bulbasaur was Eric Stewart, the guy who did Squirtle. That's who I always thought of. No, that's that. No, he, but Eric is a hell of a Squirtle. But no, and Eric directed a lot of episodes. I don't, yeah, Eric, he didn't direct from the very beginning, but yeah, he, uh, he played a ton of characters. I mean, I'm sure he's the same way. Like, you could ask. I don't even know if he'd remember all the roles he did. Right, because I know he was James and Brock, I believe. Yeah. That, I, yes. Is the that first guy right. first guy who played James, I think, left or something. Oh, maybe. I don't I don't, I don't recall because it was. Oh, mm, I wish I could remember the name. It was the guy who played Bakura in Yu-Gi-Oh. I wish. Oh, I my could, God. You probably know more than I do. Sure, I, I wish I could remember. I can see. I Don't you hate it when you can see the face? But you can't. <laughs> Name. It'll come to you in like an hour. <laughs> it'll come, no, it'll come to me like ten minutes later when I'm talking. Uh, like, so how? Did, oh yeah, <laughs> that, that guy. Uh, yeah, I'm trying. But Eric did. Eric did so much stuff. He's so good. That's a talented. I almost said a bad word. That's a talented guy. I'll say guy <laughs> instead of the bad word. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Yes. I have. To, I've never asked this of anybody. What? But can you do Bulbasaur? Oh, of course. Bulba, Bulba sharp, Bulba sharp. Ah! <laughs> Is that so weird? I, 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 it's funny to me that anyone cares. Like, and I get it. I get that it's a thing, but it was so funny to me that I even did that. That, like, I let, used to leave people voicemails with that. I'm like, re really? <laughs> you, you... See, I like doing Oddish. Oddish was always my favorite. Oh, yeah, I forgot you were Oddish. Yeah, that was my favorite one to do because it didn't hurt my voice. And I thought he was, uh, that was the one I thought was cute. Odd, a little oddish, 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 oddish. Yeah, that was so much fun. <laughs> I love that. I think we've gone to like five minutes just talking about Pokemon. I okay, think. okay, we don't, okay, we can move on. Sorry. I, gonna, I think we're only you're, on question, you're... we're only on question four, I think. Oh no, oh no, oh shoot, okay. No, I'll it's good. <laughs> I'll keep it on track. <laughs> Trust me, that 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 happened when I interviewed Townsend Coleman. We went off track a little bit. Yeah, I'm a tangent person, so. Oh, good, so am I. Rain, rain me in, yeah. Hey. So, was it like, um, is it weird to tell people that you are like creatures? Like, have people asked you about that before? Yeah, you know, adults get it. It's it's weirder when it's kids. Like, I I volunteer and I have a little sister, and. And I said to her the other, like, she was talk said something came up about Pokemon. And I said, and, you know, I haven't worked on it in a long time because I moved to L.A. And, and you know, lost the job when I moved. But I said to her, you know, I'm the voice of, of Bulbasaur on this show. And she goes, oh, I'm Pikachu. And then she started doing the voice to me. And I was like, and I wanted to be like, no, 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 really. It's, uh, but, I've heard voice actor stories like that before. Yeah, there's, like, such a disconnect between somebody actually doing and she gets other cartoons that I do like she you know there's she she likes Barbie life in the dream house and she understands summer she understands like that's my voice it sounds like me because it does sound like me but when I try to explain Pokemon there's just there's no explaining it to her which I think is adorable and I it's just more fun to watch her do the Pikachu voice at that point because I remember um I uh the guy who played Wacko Warner Jess Harnell talked about how he was uh -huh. at an amusement park once and this little kid didn't believe him that he was Wacko Warner and he kept yeah. trying to prove it to him they don't get it and it's it's so cute and it so it's like it makes it even better that 
that you you wouldn't like you know i give up trying to prove it but i think it's pretty funny to picture jess trying to <laughs> make the kid believe him i think i think my favorite was um kevin clash the guy who played elmo was talking uh-huh. He um. Are we allowed to talk about him? Yes, it's Kevin. Oh. I love Kevin. Not in that wait, way. Is it, <laughs> is it? Wait, I feel like we shouldn't. I mean, was he convicted? Do we? No, no. The case was dropped. All it, right. It was dropped because I I thought it was <laughs> I thought it was BS from the start. So. Huh. Because it's... it happened shortly after a documentary came out about him. So. That's true. That is a great documentary. Actually. Yeah. But um. Okay, sorry. Uh, so I... I remember he was talking about how his daughter, when she was little, would go up to people in the grocery store and tell people that her dad was Elmo. <laughs> and <laughs> he would do it for people and, like, nobody would ever believe him. Right. They think, oh, that guy's imitate that crazy man is imitating Elmo. I, I yeah, think... Why is that man walking through the supermarket doing an Elmo voice? I hope this doesn't sound racist, but I think it's just even the idea of thinking. Well, he's a large man, an African Amer- A large African-American yeah. man playing Elmo just sounds totally. out of place. It's so weird. It's like yeah. it's like I remember uh, I think back when um the Princess Peach first got her voice in uh, Super Mario sixty four people thought it was a man at first. Oh really? Yeah. Oh I didn't know that. That's funny. Yeah no he, he's the last person you expect to be doing that voice. You expect a slight small <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I, don't know I always who. thought it was a girl maybe doing the voice. Yeah I think I assumed that I just I didn't put a lot of thought into it so that when i saw that documentary i was like oh man that's just that, that makes it even better and like so i found this is something that when i found out i freaked uh, okay you were uh, a host with tommy snyder on cartoon network fridays yes a few years oh and yeah what was it like doing that Oh my God, that was that's my favorite job of all time. I loved. I I would have done that job forever if they if they hadn't gotten rid of us. I loved it. It was so much fun. It was like everything I loved in one job, like doing funny voices, doing sketches, doing in, like that's when I used to do all those interviews, and I fell in love with interviewing. I you know I want to do what you're doing, um, but that was awesome. Tommy was great. We're still friends. It was. It was a really great job. I got to go to Atlanta to, to Cartoon uh, Network headquarters to shoot all those, which was really cool to be kind of in the middle of the Turner uh, empire, I guess you could call it. Yeah. But uh, Wait, so did you move down to Los Angeles at that time? Yeah. Oh. That's when I moved because we sh- I could live anywhere. Once, once I was shooting in Atlanta just a little bit of the time, I could kind of have the freedom to live anywhere. And there's so much more animation out in L.A. and more space and more sun. So that's when I moved out here. Ah, because I because I remember looking at your filmography and still a lot of it was were you flying back and forth from New York? Because some of it was still New York work. At the a little bit. At the very beginning, I was there a lot. And then I slowly kind of just became L.A. based. I go home. I mean, I go back a lot. My family's there. And if there's a big enough job, I'll go back. Uh, but yeah, most of my time is L.A. And um, a funny thing with Tommy, I saw Dumb and Dumber 2 not too long ago. Oh! Yeah, and he was in it. <laughs> I know. That was like a, the biggest dream come true ever for him. That was, I, he still has his, his pay stub from the original Dumb and, his ticket stub from the original Dumb and Dumber. Dude! <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's like the best thing that could have happened. It's so exciting. He's the he's awesome. I, lo- I just love that he walks in and he's doing this really bad Canadian accent <laughs> with all these other guys. He's, he's he's so talented. Like I'm always like, God, like who is who of my friends will be big enough that they'll be like, what was it like working with? I'm like, it'll be Tommy. Like I'll, one day I'll have to sit down and be like, well, when I first met Tommy, he was just as crazy then as he like I I don't know he, I just he'll be a huge star that guy he's awesome which is weird because I thought because when I saw I um I when I found out you did it with oh, oh that sound bad when you Wait, did the show that's, with that's a him. whole other this is scandalous yeah <laughs> I mean what I'm sorry that sounded really bad no no it's but, totally fine but <laughs> when you did the show with him yes. that sounds better but, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. He's but, like my he's like my brother. Because I th- oh, that makes it worse. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, me and my brother, we did no. I'm just, I don't have a brother. 
<laughs> but I thought about like I thought maybe he was an on screen actor or something like that did a lot of work like that's what I thought like that's what I thought both of you guys were at the time when I watched that as a kid and I looked yeah. him on IMDb he really hasn't done very much like not a whole whole lot but he's young yeah he's young he uh you know he got that show when he was in like right out of high school oh. like a day out of high school so he jumped right into that uh, but yeah, he's awesome. He he'll have a, he'll get a show at some point. He's gonna be a big big deal. <laughs> and, and was that film? Because I remember whenever it was on, it was done almost. Was it live? Because it was done no. like it was done live. We tried to make it seem live. We did. We used to go for about a week, a month to Atlanta and shoot a, a four episodes. And uh, we tried as much as we could to make it feel live. Like we knew whatever the lineup would be for that night. Uh, and we gave it the appearance of live. Or if there was like a movie premiere coming out, we would go do a junket and do the interviews and then air that the week the movie came out. Hmm. And but I, I'm glad you thought it was live. We tricked you. Yeah, well, was, I, was, I was a dumb 10-year-old, okay? <laughs> well, I mean, mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, all right, so you're doing more Western work because you've done Generator X, and I saw you did like one of the Scooby-Doo movies. I, oh, yeah. And, uh, like... Yeah. Have, hey, um, what's it like doing this stuff now compared to anime work? It's, you know, it's harder and easier. Like it's, it's easier in the, uh, let me, I'm going to probably regret saying that because I'm not going to give two great examples. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's great because you have a lot more freedom. You're not obviously not locked into lip flap. You're not locked into maybe what an original voice sounded like. And you're creating some whole new character. On the other hand, there's, Sometimes freedom and restraint, like if I, sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, there's only 10 lip flaps and I have to get this in. All of a sudden I'm more creative within that space. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but it feels that way. Uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a totally different skill set too that you're calling upon because there's almost like math involved when you're doing the, the dubbing. Right. I like them. You yeah. To, I like you them have both. to time it, don't you? You do have to time it, and you're you're restricted. And I think we ha we did have a little bit more freedom on some of the bigger shows, like the anime shows back in the day. If something there, there were some alterations animation wise, they were able to make once in a while. So if they really needed something to work or fit, we had some more freedom. And a lot of the dubbing I'm doing now, it's pretty locked in. So it's fun, and it's fun. Like you get more of a contribution. It, well, that's true for both i guess you know there's more room to ad lib and improvise when you're doing new animation where there's really no room for that in anime and i love doing improv so for me that's really fun all right and what was it like because again you've done the two big uh characters i could think of in terms of i hate like this sound bad little boys uh, yeah no that's my specialty <laughs> mokuba from Yu Gi Oh and richie from pokemon those are the two right. big i think of Right, right. What, did they just flat out say, can you do a little boy? Like, Th Yeah, that's, well, again, that sounds filthy. But, uh, uh, <laughs> this, I, is, this is such a dirty episode. <laughs> I know. God, oh, I have a bad uh, brain. Okay. So <laughs> I had no, you know, it's, I, like I said, I was pretty young when I started doing all this. And, and I, this was my first anime job. And at one of the sessions, I think they just said, oh, uh, like, you know, hey, can you do these incidental characters? And it wasn't really something I knew I could do. It, it, I learned on the job that I was able to do it, which was, you know, what's better than that? Uh, so, yeah. And then once I started doing that, when, you know, I was in with all those shows were at four kids. So I guess word gets around, oh, use Tara to do, you have the couple little boys in this, you can use Tara. And all of a sudden that became what I did, which was awesome because I didn't, it wasn't intentional and it also hurt my voice a lot. So I had to be pretty careful how often I was doing it. You know, there's sometimes I'd be like, guys, I can't, I can't pick up those lines today or like my voice is shredded. So I always prefer doing the girl voice in terms of pain, but <laughs> the little boys characters are, are often very fun to do. Yeah. It's like, like have people like asked you about that? It's like, what's it like being a little boy? God, yeah. No one's, well, you're the first, I guess. Uh, what is it? Yeah. I mean, it is weird because really doesn't sound anything like me like I have my friend's kid is watching a show I did I uh I spy and she doesn't again like her husband my friend's husband doesn't believe it's me 
So that's an almost weirder disconnect than the creature stuff because I'm not a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, and again, another shocking revelation, but yeah, that's, I don't know. I don't think I answered that question appropriately. Like I said, I'm terrible interview. I'll just put NSFW <laughs> for this interview. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm completely fine with that. So Okay, great. Sold. Yay. <laughs> but um, also, with uh, the creature noises, like uh, with Pokemon, was it recorded exactly the same? Was it like the like the countdown, like to record the lines at the right moment? Yes. So it wasn't, yeah, so totally it wasn't the same uh, as dubbing. Unless they just, uh, there were times when they just, if they didn't want to, well, like if they didn't want to bring you in for a session, if there weren't a lot of noises, they they had they have libraries of our sounds, so sometimes they could make that work if it wasn't, you know, like they'd be like, oh, it's not a bulba heavy episode. Like I I remember hearing sentences like that, <laughs> um, which is so weird. That is the weird uh, sentence I think I've ever yeah, heard. I know, yeah, like like that was an everyday discussion. Uh, it's not a boba heavy episode. We're just gonna pull it from the library, so you know, like that was. That would happen sometimes. But if it was a lot of stuff, they would be more on... T or, like, if it was a ton of them in one scene, then they didn't need to match it perfectly. But whenever it was, like, Bulbasaur featured, we would do it the same way we did dubbing with any other character. Hmm. All right, and um, I've also seen, like... I have to go off of Wikipedia for this one because I didn't see this anywhere else. Okay, yeah, which is not always right. Yeah, but it yeah. said something about you hosted a couple red carpet events... Before. Oh, yeah, some internet stuff. Uh, like, right after Fridays ended, I ran with that hosting thing, and um, I would, well, I can't even remember what I did at this point. Uh, but, yeah, I would go with um, some internet outlets and do red carpet uh, premieres and interview the talent. I got to interview, like, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie at the, uh, the premiere of Benjamin Button, which was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, a bunch of that stuff, which I, I love doing that because it's you have no net, you know, it's it was live on the Internet. So you really couldn't mess up. And if nothing was happening, you you had to just vamp. And it's so I like that pressure <laughs> of not being pre-taped. Is there any advice you can give to aspiring actors or voice actors? Study, study, study. Uh is that uh, that's not that great advice, though. <laughs> um, no, I'd say study, be prepared. It's it's a commitment. You know, if you if it's something you love, then really treat it like a full time job. I, I get asked a lot like, hey, how do I sign up to do voiceovers? And <laughs> it's like saying to your dentist, like, hey, could I fill in for you next week? <laughs> um, there is prep and there is, you know, uh, go to acting classes, go to voiceover classes. Uh, watch, just watch a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, I do commercials. I listen to tons of commercials. Everyone gets mad at me in the car because I want to leave the radio, the station on when the commercials come on. So it's, it's just studying it and, and being a, and being a fan just helps. That's, I guess my advice. <laughs> and again, thank you so much. <laughs> Am I, a, I'm a very indecisive answerer. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> and again, thank you so much. Thank you. This was fun.